Hey everybody, it is Corey here at Linda's Electric Quilters. We are the Texas dealer, uh, the Gamble dealer, excuse me, for Texas and Oklahoma. And I am super excited that you're joining me today. We are going to take a look at how to elevate your quilting using Creative Studio. Um, I really like the tools that Creative Studio has and I always get reached out to people either online or through the phone wanting to know a little bit more about Creative Studio, even if it's just those basics. Um, for example, Elevate users are very hungry and very excited to learn more about how Creative Studio can expand their possibilities and their quilting. Um, for Statler users, we can take a look um, at using it directly with the head of the machine. With Elevate users, we can design the patterns and then save them and sync them over to our Elevates. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna move over into Creative Studio and let's take a look at some basic point-to-point -point rules and then some circular array and a few other tiny little tidbit things. So let's move over into this. So what I've got here is we're in Creative Studio and I wanna first start off by talking about the rules of a point-to-point -point pattern. So I'm gonna come into the rules and with a point-to-point -point pattern, the pattern must start on the left and it has to end on the right. So if we look in my pattern manager here on the left-hand side of the screen, I have got a point-to-point -point pattern right here. It starts on the left and it ends on the right. The start and end also must be on the same x-axis like this one is right here. Okay. Now another thing about point-to-point, -point, it's not really technically a rule per se, but you can also know that it does not have to say P2P or point to point in the name of the pattern in order for it to be a point to point pattern. It just has to follow those two rules. So another way that Creative Studio can kind of help you distinguish a point to point pattern, if you're looking at them in your pattern manager and you're kind of skeptical of if it is going to be one or not, is if I select the pattern and I come to my draw pattern icon, if I click on draw pattern, you can see that no warning messages have popped up, okay? And it gives me the freedom just to click around with my pattern. But if I select a pattern, let's say like this block pattern, and I come to draw pattern, Creative Studio is gonna give us a warning form stating that this is not a point-to-point -point pattern. So it's there to save us from ourselves, okay? So I can exit out of that. And I'm gonna go in and we're just gonna look at basic point-to-point -point things and then we can kind of move a little bit more from there. So I've got this pearl swirl point-to-point -point triangle. These patterns are by Joyce Lundergan, and they are in the store tab. Um, or if you visit www.patterncloud.com, you can also purchase them for your CS7 Statler or for your Elevate. So I've got this pattern right here. It's a triangle, and I'm going to come into Draw Pattern. And down in the bottom right-hand section of my screen, it says Snap right here. And I want to have my grid snap on because I want to snap to the grid when I'm clicking out this pattern. And I want to make sure that green is on. And you can see that if I move my cursor around, that little pink dot is letting me know that I'm snapping to the grid. So I'm going to start just a basic one right down here in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to left click here and I'm going to take this up to the upper right hand corner. So it's going to put in that first one going on a 45 degree. And then I want to come back down to the bottom left hand corner and click again. And then I can right click to exit and right click to close the drawing. So this gives me one way of looking at the pattern. I'm going to select this and move it out of the way. Let's also think about maybe making it a little bit more dense, getting a completely different look. So I still have my pattern selected. I'll come in with draw pattern. And I'm going to start back again here at the bottom left corner. Now, with draw pattern and point to point, the direction in which you either click with the head of your machine or with your mouse determine how that pattern is going to fall into your boundary or the block that you're working with on the quilt. So, if I click from left to right, I'm going right now in a counterclockwise direction. You can see that it's putting it inside my boundary, and I'm going to click the four points of my block, following it around. And you can see that that gives it a completely different look from the first one right here, just going on that 45. A little bit denser, which is okay, um, but you also now have two new blocks that you can save to your database and either use them directly right then on your Statler or you can sync them to your cloud account and use them on your Elevate. So I can take those. Let's move that out of the way. In a second, um, we did talk about clicking directions. So let's show what I mean by that. So pattern again, draw pattern. 
that last example we clicked from the bottom left to the bottom right. Well, what if I accidentally click from the bottom right to the bottom left? You can see that it's putting in that pattern upside down, which isn't the necessary way that we want to go. It's okay if you want to do that, though. We can work around that, just like so. And then I can actually go backwards and fill in the inside of that block. So another way to look at it as well. So let's look at draw pattern with concatenating. So right here, I've got a Lone Star block, okay? And I want to fill in these triangle and square pieces like so. So I have a triangle point-to-point -point pattern that we've been using, but I also have this diamond pattern for point-to-point. -point. And so I want to have this triangle selected. I'm going to hold Control on my keyboard and select this diamond pattern. And both of these are point-to-point -point patterns. I'm going to come in with Draw Pattern. And I'm going to start right down here at the bottom left-hand corner of this triangle. And I can click from here to here. That'll fill that section in. And if I went across, you see how that's just kind of dropping it underneath. Let's go on the diagonal of that to fill in that section right there. Go up to this point and click that. Come over to this point and click here. Come over to this point and so on all the way through. Clicking all that out until I get back here to the side where I can right click to close the drawing and I can right click to exit the drawing. Now looking at this boundary, let me turn off my grid, so I'm going to come right down here to grid and turn this off. You can see that this Lone Star block isn't perfectly pieced, bless her heart. Um, we all know, we've seen these even though our quilts are perfect, we've seen this before, y'all know what I'm talking about. If I zoom into this section, you can see that this right hand side is kind of bowing out a little bit. So I want to show you how we can kind of fill that section in. So with draw pattern, it still leaves all of these patterns as individual pieces, which is really nice if you're wanting to make those specific edits. Um, it keeps them all as individual pieces instead of combining them together. We want to keep them individual as much as we can. And I'm going to double left click through my handles. These are what we call our handles around these patterns, and they all have a different meaning. But I'm going to double left click through until I get my universal handles. Now what this does is it encompasses the three major handles that you use in Creative Studio into one, so you can use them all at one time, which is really cool. And I'm going to use my gray handle, which is this square right here, and you can see those gray colors around this. And I'm going to take this square and just stretch it ever so slightly over to that section, just like so. Now the thing about this one is, is that there are two pearls here that have now kind of been shaped into looking like eggs, okay? which takes away from that circular motion that you're wanting in that pattern. So let's bring it back a little bit using our gray handle. Bring that back a little bit just to get it more circular again. And I'm going to move into another handle that we have, which is our nodes. So if I come up here onto my tool strip, I've got nodes. And I can click on that. And I want to make sure that my snaps are off for this one. Because if you try to click it with those snaps on, sometimes it'll fly the other direction. So I'm going to come down and just turn off snap, zoom in a little bit further, and I can take this node and just drag it over to fill in that section. So I've done that one on the right hand side, and I can also check and see if there's any other ones I want to check, like this one. This is when my OCD kicks in, but I can come in and fix that. Um, and if you don't want to make any other further adjustments, you can with those handles. And for a Statler user, you can then save what you're doing and stitch it out immediately. For an Elevate user, you can highlight this whole section of the pattern. And I just did that by left clicking and holding out here in the CAD space and drag and let go. And that will select all of my background quilting that I want to do. I can right click and come down to Save Pattern. I can give it whatever name that I want to. So I'll call this Pearl Swirl Lone Star Background. Okay. And it is saving it as a point to point because that's what these patterns were, but this is now a block pattern. So I'm going to uncheck point to point and I'm going to give it the pattern type of a block. Joyce Lundergan was the original designer of those two patterns, so I'm going to leave that there um, as her collection so it's a lot easier to find it in the future. I can say save and close. You can see that it's going to save it to my project. Um, so for us Statler users, we can get going right away, but for an Elevate user, we'll come to the patterns tab and we'll see that it's right here at the very front. I can 
right click on it and I can come to sync back up to cloud as long as I'm logged into my cloud account and it will sync just that one pattern very quickly right up to your cloud account so then you can walk over to your Elevate and sync it down so you can use it on your quilt. Next thing I want to talk to you about is um, importing an image. So it's really cool to use standalone mode to design different patterns or design different ideas to show not only yourself but also your customer of what you're going to have the quilting look like. So I can take a picture of a block or I can pull a picture from the internet, either one, but I can take a picture of a block and I can import that into Creative Studio and design directly like right on top of it. It's really cool. So I'm going to come into File and I'm going to go to Import Image. And Creative Studio comes standard with a bunch of different block um, images that you can use or full quilt images that you can use. But my image is on my desktop. I'm going to click on this one and I will say open. And I have my image and it has opened up a new quilt group for me. And this is a spinning star hexagon block. The first thing that I want to do when I'm working with images is kind of lower the opacity or the transparency of the image. So I can right click on that image right here on the CAD screen and come down to image attributes. And right here I've got image opacity and I can bring that down and it basically just kind of fades the image away. So when I put quilting on top of that, or a pattern on top of that, then um, it's a lot easier to see it and work with it. So I'm going to click on this little X. And what I want to do is look at this hexagon a little bit of a different way. I want to show you that it's okay to cross over that piecing line when you're doing some of this quilting because it can kind of, the way the thread color works, it'll give it a completely different look in those uh, different pieces when you cross over that piecing. It's okay that you don't have to fit a certain thing here, 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 and here. You can cross over that piecing line. It's completely okay. So looking at this hexagon, if I look at this in its entirety, I see a 60 degree triangle right in here, which is just basically repeated around in a circle. But overall, I see a 60 degree triangle right in this section. So I can come into my patterns tab and one of the pearl swirl 60 degree triangles that Joyce has is this one. And so using point to point, like we've just done, I can select this pattern and come into draw pattern. Now we talked about at the beginning, clicking direction matters. It really, really does. So if we click from left to right, you'll see that it's going to place that pattern in right side up, which is what it's supposed to do. But I want this pattern to go down into this image so I can design on top of it. So instead of clicking from left to right where it goes up right side up, I can click from right to left and it's going to place that pattern in upside down, right on top of that image. And I'm going to right click to exit and right click to close that drawing. And just because I am really OCD, I'm going to come to my start and end point handles. And I just got to those by double left clicking on the pattern. These are your blue squares that appear. And I'm going to zoom into this section and just move my start point to that piece. Come on over and move my end point to this piece just so it works out the way I want it to. So now I want to fill this pattern into this entire section. And I'm going to come select this pattern and go to circular array. So you can have that icon on your tool strip or you can right click on the pattern and go to circular array. And what Circular Array is going to do is it's going to place these patterns in in a clockwise fashion because of the way that these start and end points are. So you'll see that it has popped those on the outside of this design where I really wanted them to be on the inside of the design. So I can uncheck my little connect box right here. So I'll uncheck connect and I have this blue circle. And what this is going to allow me to do is move these patterns and what Joanne Knight calls these is her little synchronized swimmers. If I take this, you see, uh oh, look at that. Oh, there they go. They're over there. Then they're over there. But I can bring that blue circle into the center of this design. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And I can place that and place it there. But the only thing about doing this is sometimes you're, oh, wait, oh, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait, no. Okay, and that gets a little bit confusing and it really can be annoying sometimes. So I can click cancel out of here. And we said that direction matters. You notice when we click on this initial one, we went into circular array, it put it in a clockwise motion because of our start and end points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this pattern, 
and come to reverse start and ends, which is going to put the start point now on the left, the end point over here on the right. And since it's going to go in a clockwise fashion, when I click circular array, bam, it's going to place those in there just like that and fill up that block in its entirety. So when we look at this block and we see the way it looks here, like I talked about, so definitely okay to cross over those piecing lines. It's not going to hurt it by any means. But the, another thing about this is you can see here in the center that we're leaving some open spaces. Right there in that center, all of that fabric is going to just collect and have that little lump. And, you know, that's okay, but I'd also like all those pieces just to, all the pieces of the pattern to meet in the center perfectly. So that way it keeps that center nice and flat instead of it puckering up. Because all that batting is going to go and puff right in that section. So what I want to do is I'm going to select all of my patterns so I can drag and uh, left click and hold out here on the CAD screen and make a box and select them all. And I'm actually going to turn my grid back on. When I've been using this design on my image, I turn my grid off, but I actually want to turn this back on and zoom in. And I'm going to grab this whole section of patterns and just move it to the closest grid center point. And I can zoom in a little bit further to see, get it as perfect as I can just like that. And I'm going to select each of these patterns individually and go into my nodes. So I've got the nodes of the pattern. And this is a pink node, which is the actual line of the node. You can see I can move that actual line. And since we're working with the grid, we want to have our grid snap turned on. So I'll turn snaps on and make sure that I have grid selected. And I'm going to take this and snap that to the grid. I'm just left clicking and holding on that pink node and moving it close to that grid point. It's going to drop it right in just like so. Place that one there and get this last one right here. Zoom out and then I can select all of these and move them back for you so you can see what the actual pattern would look like itself. Turn off my grid and that's what's going to be on top of my block. And so I've now created a new hexagon block that I can save that and use it over and over and over again, not only for my Statler, but also for my Elevate. So with those little simple tidbits of things, you can really work um, a lot of your pattern design capabilities with Creative Studio. My biggest advice would be just to dive into the software and start playing with it. I promise you, you're not going to break it. I promise you. You might get a few error messages here and there, but you're not going to break it. Get in there, take pictures of your blocks, import them in, play around, click with different things. There's a lot of helpful tools in Creative Studio and helpful videos that are built in so you can really easily watch what's going on. Um, I'd like to thank you guys so much for joining me and looking at how I elevate my quilting with Creative Studio. Make sure that you follow Gamble on all of their social media pages so you can stay up to date whenever they post these new, fun, live videos. Well, from all of us here in Texas, I'll see you next time. Bye.